Have you ever used graphic templates, uh, noise reduction, or really done anything in Fusion, and you probably did not have the real-time playback on your timeline that you were hoping for? Have you ever seen the light go red in the viewer? Well, renders are the answer, but Resolve has two different ways to render. There's the render cache, and that's ideal for work in progress, automatic background rendering. And then there's also render in place, and that's great for collaborative projects and heavy fusion comps. But if you really want to tame your timeline and know the best settings, let's dive a little bit deeper. What's render cache? Well, just like when you browse the internet, parts of websites get cached or stored on your computer's hard drive so it's faster to load them the next time. Resolve can do the exact same thing by storing calculated frames in your codec of choice. It's baking out the frame with all the debayering and changes that you may have made to show it on screen as fast as possible. The image sequence frames are stored in a very proprietary format called the DVCC, I think it's DaVinci Cache Clip format, and they're stored at the timeline resolution. That's an important thing to pay attention to. They're stored at the timeline resolution. Render Cache is designed to work on a single resolve system and can be turned on easily by going to the playback menu down to render cache and checking smart or simply hitting the keyboard shortcut. That's what I like to do. It's option or alt R. Smart is the automatic mode. When the smart cache is turned on, the timeline is going to go red for clips that are raw, H.265, fusion titles, effects and comps, transitions, overlaid composites or noise reductions used. Basically, you know, it's the stuff that's difficult for any computer to tackle on the fly. Resolve is going to pre-render those when the machine is idle for about five seconds. That's what's in the project setting default. If you need the entire timeline rendered, park the playhead at the beginning and take a break away from the computer. Once the computer's done doing its thing, it's going to turn blue after it's rendered. And a great pro tip that I learned from Patrick Sterling is to actually turn on the option to show all video frames up in the upper right of the viewer if you can't wait for the machine to do a background cache. That'll make sure it renders them all in sequence. If you edit any changes, DaVinci Resolve will update the cache files automatically but it does mean it needs to re-render those. However, sometimes you do not want your computer to render all H.265 or RAW files. See, in smart mode, render cache skips over H.264 and ProRes on my timeline, but my computer can actually play H.265 just fine, so I want those skipped too. So for more user control, under the playback menu, choose the user mode. This is mostly manually controlled by right-clicking on a clip and tagging the level of cache you want rendered, and selecting the color output cache is the final manual render operation. I say mostly manual because if you open up the project settings, there's a few other checkboxes to auto-trigger renders even in the user mode. I suggest turning all of those boxes on. The cache builds up on this order of operations. First, you have the Fusion Output Cache. Then you have the OFX and Fusion Filter Cache. And this one's kind of unique. It can only manually be turned on. And then on the color page, you have node caching available. And then after the node caching on the color page, things go back to the edit timeline. And I know that's confusing, but here you have a color output cache, which is it's everything that comes out of color. And finally, you have sequence caching on the edit page. Now, sequence caching basically contains all the stuff that makes your edit get put together. So it's things like transitions, opacity, supers, adjustment layers, any sort of retiming that you're doing. So what this means, if you edit something and make a change earlier in the cache operation list here, the rest is all gonna need to be re-rendered when you take that coffee break. So what's render in place? Well, render in place bakes out a shareable video file. It's almost as if you went to the deliver page and then you exported the file and you brought it back into the timeline. Using the right click option on a clip, render place is the surefire way to get excellent real time results regardless of any of the rendering effects that you're doing. And because I personally use render in place so often, I set it to a keyboard shortcut of command shift R. I took all of the boxes except the color grading effects, so that way I can grade on top of the file as long as you choose the correct codec settings, which are coming next in this video. Don't worry, we'll get there. It's essential for working in DaVinci Resolve multi-user collaboration, which is something I do a lot, and another editor needs to open the work. It's just done, it's rendered, it, it'll play back smooth. And the key takeaway is this, render and cache writes files to be used locally on your fastest SSD versus render in place it can export any sort of file that can be used on any sort of shared storage 
or synced with Blackmagic Cloud. Some other benefits of using Render in Place include the checkbox that you can add handles. I personally use 10. That's great if you have edit changes later on, or if you did a fusion comp and you need motion blur to start on that very first frame. And the huge benefit of rendering using the source resolution of all those original pixels to retain the source quality. Remember the render cache renders at the timeline resolution? It needs to be re-rendered if you need to make those social aspect ratios, whereas if you did a render in place, you can use the same file. Now, if you have edit changes, you need to right click to decompose to original, which must be done from the timeline. Okay, this is important. Keep those comps on the timeline. You can't pull this rendered clip from the media pool to a new timeline and decompose it. It's going to lose this unique decompose superpower. And each time you make a new version, it's going to make a new file. It's not overriding like the render cache does. Here's a quick pro tip. If you need to batch render the whole timeline, you can actually select them all and do it at once. And then the same goes for if you need to decompose all of those back to the unrendered files. Render cache best codec settings. For render cache, go to your project settings. You get there by going to the lower right of your resolve interface, hit that cog icon and go to your master settings. Optimize media and render cache section. By the way, I would avoid ever using what's called the optimized media in Resolve. This is like a legacy thing. Proxies are a way better way of doing this, and I have a recent tutorial on that. Choose the render cache format. If you're on a Mac, I would choose ProRes 422LT. And if you're on Windows, choose DNX HRSQ. I've, I personally, I tested these a ton and they're very similar in quality and are not gonna fill up your SSD too fast. I leave my background cache to five seconds, which is how long the computer needs to idle before caching. Now at this point, I would save these project settings in the upper right three dot menu and set that to set current settings as default preset. A quick note about projects where you might enable collaboration is this actually forces a brand new cache to be created. Collaboration cache is per user and really shouldn't go to a network storage device. I would not suggest flipping between collaboration on and collaboration off unless it's really a necessity. If you ever have a corrupt cache, which does definitely happen, select the clips that are not displaying correctly there on your timeline and go up to the playback menu and delete the render cache and choose selected clips. When your whole cache drive fills up, go back to the playback menu and then go to the manage render cache option. This is a great option to delete up entire projects worth of cache. You can choose the, uh, the project library that it's in, the type of project library, and then you can even sort if you choose the, uh, the sorting option for clicking the render cache column header to find the bigger projects. You can get rid of the, the bigger problem areas quicker. And you don't have to worry because next time you open a project that needs these files, the computer will just remake them. You're not deleting raw media assets or anything like that. This is a safe operation to do. Here's a quick pro tip for my Fusion friends. Fusion has its own render cache to disk option, but I personally never found this to work great inside of Resolve. So instead, what I suggest doing is use a saver node, just like I do in the tutorial I have about saving magic masks. It kind of acts like a render in place for just working within Fusion. Render in place best codec settings. For render in place on a Mac, I would always use ProRes HQ for prosimmer footage, like stuff from a Sony FX3 or ProRes 444 for raw footage or graphics that still need the transparency. You know, to be able to see through it all, you need ProRes 444. But on a Windows computer, those would be DNX HQX 10 bit for prosumer footage. And then for anything else that, you know, raw footage and things that need graphics, use DNX HR444 12 bits and you should be good. Now, if you run out of storage space, you can actually manually delete these files from Windows Explorer or the Mac Finder, but actually I don't delete render in place files. Storage locations. So for render cache in the project settings, scroll down to working folders and make sure your cache files location is set to cache clip there should be no space in there. That's C-A-C-H-E-C-L-I-P, okay? This is actually gonna be the first drive that you have in your DaVinci Resolve preferences under the system tab, media storage, and directory location. Now, to be honest, to avoid confusion and filling up your operating system hard drive, I suggest getting something like a Samsung T7 or T9, some similar SSD, and just pointing all these temporary files there. Now, for render in place, this is chosen when you run the manual render in place command. It'll ask you each time. I place all of mine in a very job specific folder that contains all of the elements for that specific project. 
final delivery. On final export for your full timeline, Resolve will use your render in place renders that are down there, but it won't use the render cache renders. But if you want to change this behavior for render in place, you just right click to decompose your clips. As for the render cache to actually be used, I never do this, but in the deliver page under the advanced section, there is a checkbox that says to use render cached images. This could maybe speed up your final export, but I found it doesn't always. I'm Chadwick, I'm a Resolve commercial finishing artist and trainer here in New York, but I wanna know more about who you are, what you're up to, what your pain points are, and get connected. So check out creativevideotips.com. You can also find out when I have Resolve courses available that I'm working on, or if you wanna schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.